So I recently purchased my first Raspberry Pi. Uh, this has been something that's been on my radar for a little while now. I've generally just wanted to play around with one and, and see what it was all about. I ordered one, it came in the mail, and I quickly realized I was unprepared and that I was missing some pretty important pieces. So I thought it'd be helpful to share some of the tips that I wish I knew before I ordered my Raspberry Pi. So first things first, what is a Raspberry Pi? Well, this is a single board computer that fits in the palm of your hand and is actually pretty affordable. I bought this one for less than $60 and there's ones that are even cheaper than this. You can think of this as a computer. It is a computer. Though it doesn't look like your desktop or laptop, it can do a lot of the same things and can be used to program fun things like your own IoT gadgets, games, robots, music players, or just surf the web. It's really neat. But when you order one, this is all it comes with. Let me show you the box. Nothing else, it's just this board. And I didn't realize that. So you're gonna to wanna to buy a few extra things that maybe you have around the house or maybe need to grab offline, but I'm gonna show you which extra things you need when your Raspberry Pi shows up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to buy after you purchase your Raspberry Pi is a micro SD card, this little guy here. This is what you're gonna download the operating system onto and what's gonna plug right into the back of your Raspberry Pi. I bought this one on Amazon for about 10 bucks. I'll add a link in the description. Uh, I like it because it also comes with an adapter that I was able to plug right into my laptop, download the operating system onto, and I was done. But there's dozens of options on Amazon, but I'll, I'll link you to this one. I thought it was pretty handy. Um, there's other alternatives you can use to download the operating system onto and add it to the Raspberry Pi, but there's literally a slot on the back of the Raspberry Pi for a micro SD card. I would say just make your life simple and, and buy one of these. The next thing you're gonna need is a USB-C cord. Uh, this is what's going to power your Raspberry Pi and allow it to turn on. Um, I'm a Mac user, so I had a couple of these lying around the house. If you don't, not a big deal. They're 10 to 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but make sure you have one of these so that you can turn your Raspberry Pi on. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a monitor and an HDMI cord to hook the Raspberry Pi to the monitor. If you don't have a monitor at home, you can get a 24 inch one on Amazon for less than a hundred bucks. There's a bunch of options out there. Um, and then if you don't have one of these cords, you're gonna to need to buy one as well. So this is an HDMI to a micro HDMI cord. That's required. The Raspberry Pi only has micro HDMI ports. So you're gonna need a micro HDMI to HDMI cord to get the information from the Pi to the monitor. Next, you need to make sure you have a mouse and a keyboard. Just like your laptop or desktop, you need a keyboard and a mouse to navigate the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi has four USB ports on it. So ideally, you get a mouse or a keyboard that has a Bluetooth receiver that you can plug right in to the Raspberry Pi itself. I have the Raspberry Pi 4, which actually does have Bluetooth capabilities without the receiver, but when you're first setting it up, it really is gonna save you some headaches to just have a receiver that automatically connects and goes. This way, when you first fire up the Raspberry Pi and connect it, you'll be able to click around and navigate the screen and go to Bluetooth settings. So I highly recommend either a corded mouse and keyboard or a mouse or keyboard that comes with a Bluetooth receiver. I think it's likely gonna save you some headaches. So the last thing I'd recommend is definitely optional, but I would consider some sort of holder or case for your Raspberry Pi. What you'll quickly realize when you buy your Raspberry Pi is that you're commonly unplugging and plugging things into the Raspberry Pi, and it doesn't feel great to hold the edge when you're doing that. There's not a great place to squeeze, and it's kind of a fragile thing. So. Having somewhere else you can hold is great. Also, the micro SD card sits on the back side of the Raspberry Pi. So just having it sit on the table doesn't feel great. And the same goes for applying pressure when you're unplugging and plugging things into it. It doesn't feel great to be pushing down on the back where the SD card is and there's all sorts of exposed gadgets there. So it's a fun DIY project if you want to build a stand on your own. I built this silly little thing. I don't even really know what it is. Uh, but you can also buy one online for cheap. So I'll add some links to the description for others that you can buy if you'd like to. Once you have all these items, you should be ready to go. You can now get started setting up your Raspberry Pi and starting your first project. 
You'll download the operating system onto the SD card. When you do that, you'll give it your Wi-Fi credentials so you can connect to the internet. And then you can use your Raspberry Pi to surf the internet for your first project. I think it's pretty cool. I'm a beginner, so I'm excited to get started with my Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna start searching the internet for beginner projects, but if you have any recommendations on where to start, or if you have any tips for setting up the Raspberry Pi for the first time, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you uh, and excited to see where this thing takes me.